Hello, everybody. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about the ICV Plus app that we'll be releasing or replace our existing apps. This app has been redesigned in a way to make it more user friendly, which is the main focus. The secondary focus was doing performance enhancements. Um, you'll see when I'm loading up the video feeds how quickly the videos are going to be loading in comparison to like our old app, which would take a lot longer. Um, there are going to be some caveats such as limitations on support of legacy systems. I can't guarantee if somebody has like a 2013 or 14 machine that it's going to work perfectly on our current app, a new app. In those cases, they'll have to use the old app or it's time for them to upgrade their gear to something newer if they want to take advantage of all the new features in the new app. That being said, let's go ahead and actually dive into the app. Um, starting off, the app is called ICView Plus. It has a new design to it, it's similar to like our IC Home, following the same color uh, theme and layout. So once we go ahead and load up the app for the first time, obviously you still got to do the same thing of picking your region. Uh, once you do that, for first time users, it's going to ask them if you're trying to migrate over from our old existing equipment and from the old app to the new app, there is a demonstration video. Let's go ahead and just open that up real quick. Now, as you can see in the demonstration video, it's going to show you to click on the old app, open the new old app, go to home, go to your devices, and then export your device list by creating a device card. Now, once you have your device list exported and saved to your photos, as instructed in this video, you'll then be able to go to the new app and import it. So that way you don't have to know all your information, you're just able to quickly move from the old app to a new app. Makes it hassle-free. This video is saved in the actual mobile app. It's also saved on our uh, YouTube channel. It'll be available for users to go back and reference it later. And it'll also be available on our help main, uh, manual for it as well, help desk center. So there's a lot of options to get to this video, including we also have a bunch of other videos that will be available on our YouTube account and help center. Now for me, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick manual ad. So I am here locally, I'm just gonna go ahead Punch in the local information, so bear with me while I go ahead and load this up. Now, once you've loaded up the camera feed for the first time, or loaded up live view, or playback menu for the first time, generally you'll get some like help instructions showing you how to use the app. You have things such as showing you to click here to enable your microphone and do two-way talk, or click here to go to playback, click here to save a snapshot of the video, or click here to switch your um, HD or SD stream. So switching between the high definition video stream or the low standard definition video stream. By default, the app loads in standard definition for the first time. Just because we don't know what the bandwidth limitations are for wherever the customer is for either their hot site or their phone. Um, it's as simple as pressing the button, obviously, and it'll switch the feeds. Now, I'm just going to back out real quick. So on the app itself, you'll see here that there are the thumbnails for the four cameras that we just loaded up. But the rest of the cameras that we have on our system are not loading thumbnails yet. The thumbnails generate when you open up the app for the first time, the video feed. So when you hit play all, if we go into like a nine or a 16 split, and it loads up all the cameras, and we continue to rest, load up the rest, we're gonna go ahead and back out, and now we have camera feeds. Now, unlike the old app, when you loaded up a camera, uh, there used to be like information at the top and overlay as well. And in the old app, it would put like bit rates and it'll put game time extra overlay from the app and it make it hard to read the information. That whole overlay menu was removed, so it's just the raw footage now. Um, so let's get into the rest of the live view menu. Now, on the live view menu, you have to see at the top right, there's a help option or a question mark. You click that, you access the help menu that's available in the app. Um, there are GIFs embedded into the help menu as well for different menus when you have like use PTD control and that. Um, so we'll go ahead and load up the PTZ. If I wanted to do PTZ, since we did talk about PTZ, to get to the PTZ, there are more hidden menus. Those little arrows that are right below the mic, if you click that, it expands the main menu options. And then you have your PTZ control there, you press it, you get your PTZ control and you can move it. Um, besides that, you can obviously tap twice to either zoom in or zoom out for the image to go uh, full screen or make it back into a four screen. It does four, nine, and 16 splits. 
Um, what else? So that's the live view in a nutshell. Um, it is grouped up and cleaned up, so it is focused just on those specific cameras. Um, now, if you see below, it says alerts. We'll go ahead and go back and subscribe to some alerts. So with the, on the homepage, click the three dots, go to your device details for your system. And then from here, you can click on alarm subscription, turn it on, and then you can go ahead and select the type of alarms you want to get. In others, there's a bunch of other ones as well, depending on the system that you have and certain functionalities. I'm not going to go over every single one of them. But for now, we'll do IMD. We'll select all for human. Why not some vehicles? Drones probably going to go crazy in a moment. Um, we're going to go ahead and back up. Now that we subscribe, we'll give it a moment to generate some alerts. But in the meantime, I'll also show you fish ID work on LiveView because that also got an enhancement. Now, once you go to uh, arrows down, click on fish ID work, same original fish ID work symbol. There are two, now two modes of uh, fish ID work. You have your traditional, which is the, if you see in the camera video feed, the bottom right one, you can select that one, kind of like with goggles. Um, this one's your traditional one where you swipe, swipe up, down with your finger, sliding it in and out. And you can rotate the video, etc. But if you click the other icon above it, it does a full screen split. Kind of like what you're used to seeing on like Smart Ace or SS or on the local monitor, where you can change each square individually to different positions and rotate, and etc. And change each one so they're looking at different angles. And that's kind of the fish ID work mode itself. Now if we were to do, let's say, like playback, um, to get to playback for any camera, after you load it up live view on that camera, you just hit the playback button that's on that menu, and then it'll load up. Now this little window right here that I'm moving around on the screen is movable. You can just click on it and drag it around anywhere on the screen you kind of want. That is actually the live view of the camera. So you can both watch live view and playback at the same time. Now to swipe through a different timeline, you can slide it over, just with your finger and it loads. And as you saw, it loaded very quickly. It's because of those performance enhancements we were talking about. Um, so besides that, we're gonna go ahead and move that down. And then let's say you wanted to, let's say we want to back up this footage. Um, let's go ahead and click the scissors. It's gonna give you a couple options here. You have the um, start and stop basically. So you, this is, if this is the beginning of your video, you press the start. It's gonna set a marker, a black marker on the timeline. You can move it forward, hit the stop, and that's the end period. So I'm like, okay, do you want to download it? Hit okay, and it's going to download that clip. Um, when the clip is available, it'll be in your file section. Um, I did hear us get a couple notifications, so we'll take a quick look at that. In the meantime, I'll stop notifications so my phone doesn't start blowing up. Um, as simple as turning that off. So while we were at it, you could quickly arm and disarm uh, alarm links. So button, all you do is turn it on and off here to disable that. Um, but since I disabled it, it doesn't matter. Um, turn it back up. Now, alerts. So we got a motion vehicle. I'm going to select this one. When you play back your, your motion events or your IVS or, or push notifications, you're only going to be able to search notifications for up to like the last week. You're not going to be able to go past that because the phone's only going to retain data for so long. Uh, in the, so after a certain time period, they're not going to be able to view back. So two, three weeks ago, they're not going to go back and go view it. Now, let's say today, Wednesday, we wanted to look at one of these events. All you do is simply click on it, and then it's going to load. But it'll play back that event, and it'll still give you your, your alerts event list below it. And if you want to click on it, you can play the other one. So you can easily jump back and forth between alerts to make it easier. You can always click live view, and it'll load up the live video feed as well from here. Um, now we can go back real quick. So that was the IPS B40V on the side of the building. We're just gonna go ahead and quickly find that camera. And that is right here. See how quickly I found that with the new layout. Now on live view, if you had alerts set up, you'll see your alerts will also show up down here at the bottom. And this list will load up and refresh based upon whatever camera you have selected or, um, at that time. Now, for example, if we go back and I click, let's do this camera, 
there is no alert, there was no push notification for that camera, so I didn't get anything. So the list is empty. But if I go back to the other camera, then the list populates. You can always the what looks like the calendar symbol uh, above the alert. If you click on that, you can also pick the different days as well um, quickly at a at a glance. Um, so, and you can click the little arrow to expand it to bring it up in case you had a long list and you had to look through them. Now, that's the alerts themselves there. It does have a snapshot from the camera originally when it went through. Let's go ahead and back. Um, so we talked about live view. We've talked about how to look at alerts, how to um, view the alerts, how to go to playback, how to playback, uh, how to do fish ID work, etc. So the general functions of like live view, the general function of playback, they're kind of similar to the original app, but they've been cleaned up and consolidated. Like the buttons have been consolidated for you guys as much as possible. Now, the biggest change obviously was this. Besides that, they can also create a favorites group on your homepage um, to add certain cameras to a group. Let's say I wanted to, let me go back to the camera. I want to add this camera to a favorite group. All I do is once I have the camera, I just click the favorites and then you can create a new favorite group. I press the plus sign. I'm just going to do this one as fave, um, short for favorites, and then add that camera to the favorites group. I can add other cameras. Let me just do like, maybe like the outside cameras. This is a group of outside cameras. Like maybe I group up my indoor cameras, etc. Um, so I'm just going to load that favorite, add that as well. Uh, we'll back up. So now you have those three cameras in your favorites group. It's going to be in this style. Uh, you just hit view all and it's going to play your favorites group list. And if there's notifications on the other squares, you just click on the squares and they'll load up your notification alerts. Uh, that's the overall app itself. Um, those were the main changes. There are a lot of, like I said, performance enhancements to fix um, issues such as long load times, etc. So a lot of that went into the details. Uh, we spent a lot of effort on that. Now, when you go into settings, that's where you'll be able to get to view your files. You can click all, you can look at your video files or your images if you save some snapshots. Um, same thing like the old app, you still would have to view them here, export them. Uh, you can export devices here if in case you want to share the device with like a loved one, like let's say the husband has the cameras on his phone and he wants to share it with the wife, you can export the device here, create a device card, and then save it to your phone. Um, now, besides that, you also have inside the settings, you have favorites. That's where you can manage, delete your favorites groups. You can create new favorites groups too manually here if you want to just quickly select the names and then next and create one. You can create one and it creates a group. Or you can simply just delete the favorites group. Um, besides that, this is also where you'll come to get to the help menu. If you go to help, um, you go live and you see you can find your thumbnail. Oh, you go playback, it does. There are plenty of GIFs in here showing you how to do things like how do I do playback? How do I um, search for file type? Um, so, for example, if I wanted to, oh, that's actually one I should probably show you guys. If I want to do like IVS playback only or motion uh, playback only. Let's say I go to that camera. I want to look for only motion events. When I go to playback, by default, it's going to load all video feed. We click right above the timeline where it says, it shows like the date. Click that. It's going to bring up a calendar. It's going to show you like little uh, symbols next to the days that have footage. Let's say I want to pull yesterday's footage. Um, we're going to do motion, vehicle, and hit OK. And then it's only going to play back those motion events where there's vehicle. And as you see, there's cars driving in the background on the road. And I can easily swipe through, and it's going to filter just to just those motion events at that point. Uh, there's plenty of movement. It's, that's how you quickly can filter. Um, as for this live view, I did forget to mention that you can always close it. There's a little X button here in the top right. You can click that, and it does close. Um, you can always disable that permanently if people don't want it. If anybody has questions on how to do anything on the playback menu, don't forget there is the help icon at the top of the app as well on the playback menu, that little question mark, just click it, and it'll take you straight to the help article and show you how to do these functions. Uh, and that's kind of everything that I kind of wanted to cover in the app.
you guys have any questions, feel free to get down to me. Um, but there are going to be plenty of YouTube videos available. There are help center articles. Um, so do take a moment, play around with the app when you do get your hands on it, and take a moment to look at the videos uh, that are available for us on YouTube as well. Thank you guys and have a good one.